Hi, this is Alicia. Uh, in response to the first two tutorials I've made on training ferrets, I've had a few questions. Um, and one of those is dealing with uh, ferrets and their biting and nipping. My little volunteer today. Um, Boo is going to be two next month, and he's never been a real big biter. Uh, but ferrets being small, uh, predatory animals, they learn by roughhousing just like cats and dogs. Um, and not all, um, not all ferrets are prone to biting. Some are. And not all ferrets bite to hurt you. I had a, uh, ferret that lived to be, uh, ten years old, and he would nip and hold to let you know that he was in the area because he was blind and deaf. So do not take, uh, into account that when a ferret bites you, it's biting to hurt you. Uh, it may be its way of communicating with you um, because they are such small animals. Uh, Lily, uh, who is around here somewhere, will often um, grab a hold of my sock or grab a hold of my toe with her teeth to let me know that she wants some attention. Um, but in the event that you, you do have a biter, uh, and usually it's kits that have the problem with biting, um, what I recommend is if you have them and they're latched onto your finger, um, take your thumb and your middle finger and put a little bit of pressure on each side of the uh, each side of the muzzle and then with your forefinger if you can wiggle your finger out a little bit um, by putting pressure um, on each side of the muzzle it makes it uncomfortable for them to want to hold your finger you don't need a lot of pressure you don't want to hurt them um, and another question that I had had was um, when my ferret is uh, naughty, how do I punish it? An uh, easy way to uh, punish a ferret in a ferret's language that it would understand, just like um, dog language and cat language, um, ferrets get punished by scruffing. Um, the way one mother ferret would punish another ferret, or when you get a new ferret, the way another ferret would express its dominance, is to grab one ferret by the scruff and you're looking for the um, clump of fur, hi buddy, between uh, the four of the sho uh, shoulders, over the shoulders, and right behind the shoulders. And this is a fairly loose amount of skin. It doesn't hurt them to hold them like this. It is a way to get, you know, immediate control of them. They can't really bite you when they're, uh, when you've got them scruffed. And for the most part, most ferrets go placid when you scruff them like that. If they're being naughty, a nice way to, um, you know, assert your dominance and effectively punish them, and this is not a way you would do it where you would hurt them, is you would scruff them, and then you put your hand to the ground, just like this. And they're going to jerk a little bit, and they're going to want to get away, and um, they're going to kind of look at you. Boo's looking at me because he didn't do anything wrong. He's wanting to know why I'm punishing him. But effectively, you hold them there for a few minutes until they get the point that they've done something wrong and then you can let them up. And it's a non-physical way in the way that you're not going to spank them. You don't ever want to hit your ferrets. Uh, you don't want to hit them. You don't want to drop them or toss them. I go. So this is a non-physical way of punishing them where it's more of a body language kind of thing and you're restricting them rather than you're going to smack them. You don't ever want to hit your ferrets. So you would just scrub them and then put them down. Hi buddy, good boy. Uh, another question that I had had um, was how to get your parrots a little more voice trained. Um, all three of mine are rather well voice trained. Um, as I can see that Archie is down by my feet. Do you want to get down? Alright. And this does help when you're dealing with them off leash. Um, in scenarios where I have them outside and I'm doing photography outside or where I um, may be working in a studio, um, they're kind of tuned into my voice. Yeah. These are little training aids, little treats. Uh, not enough to fill them up, just enough to reinforce good behavior. Yes, good boy. Yes. And just like in the first training video where we were going over uh, positive reinforcement with uh, leash training, voice training is the same thing. When you call their name and you 
get them to respond. You say, Archie. And then they get a little bit of treat. This is probably just like your, your training treat. It's a very small treat where they learn to associate your voice with something positive. Boogaroo. Boogaroo, come here, buddy. Come on, buddy. Good boy. Just a little treat. Not anything very big. Probably the you know half the size of your baby pinky now. Okay. And after a couple of sessions of that, they'll learn to associate your voice with um, either a treat or something tasty. And just like if you were training a dog, uh, start to slowly take away the treats and and do um, more physical reinforcement, where you're petting them and scratching them and doing things that they like. Um, one of the questions I got was, what kind of toys do I buy my ferrets that are safe toys? Um, Kong makes an awful lot of great rubber toys that are uh, hard rubber, and my ferrets love them. I haven't had a ferret yet that does not like the rubber toys. You want up, bud? Yeah. And the Kong toys are kind of nice because you can take a, and make a, like a pate where it's a high meat, low sugar, uh, low dairy. It's very good for them. And then they're going to really like to chew on these things. They can't really destroy them too much. I mean, these, uh, are, uh, this company was built on the premise of having a dog toy that was indestructible. So this company started making you know, toys for Great Danes and St. Bernard's and the like. So uh, something the size of a ferret, <laughs> as you can see. He really likes his toys. Um, is, is in the ballpark of something that they can handle. Um, one of my ferrets, who has now passed, used to like carrying around socks. And so occasionally I will have a sock toy for my kids. Lily likes socks. Lou likes to make forts out of my socks. Um, but Freya used to like to play tug with my socks. This is not yours, buddy. This is not yours. Sit. Sit. Thank you. Um, so this one's kind of been retired because mine are not too into the Buddha, but this is a small little uh, toy dog sized Buddha. It's really kind of good. It's very durable. This has gone through quite a few ferrets. Boo's not really into the, the tuggy toys as much as uh, he's into the rubber toys. Um, cat toys in general. Cody. Cody back. Back. Good boy. Stay. Cat toys in general are generally a good place to look for toys uh, for ferrets. The toys that make the noise are very stimulating. Um, I have quite a few of these smaller toys that are kind of felt toys that have little balls in them. He's off looking for the Kong toy. Um, <laughs> right there, in fact. Um, so uh, they're really good for stimulation when it comes to noise. Uh, uh, noise and texture are really good ways to get them involved. Uh, I had several ferrets that were very into these little mylar toys, or, uh, that again are cat toys, um, but it's the different noises and the different textures that they really enjoy. Uh, Dante was very into the uh, mylar balls, uh, and you do have to keep an eye on these for wear and tear, because after a few sessions with these, they can start to break down and they can eat them. So um, keep an eye on these as far as wear and tear. But these are also very good toys. Want to play with that, buddy? No? Um, not a Kong toy brand name per se, but the hard rubber toys that are uh, designed for cat toys and kitten toys are also fairly good. Oh, you little turkey. Um, this was a favorite of Artemis's. Um, and this is kind of small, and it's got little nubs on it. Please don't take the lamp and push it off the table. <laughs> um, and very durable. You want a hard rubber toy, not the soft rubber toy, and not latex squeaky toys, uh, because the ferrets have such a hard bite and uh, such sharp teeth that they can tear them up and uh, ingest them and hurt them. Uh, two toys that I have that are kind of plushy toys uh, is this uh, cat toy that has uh, mylar in it, but it's graded for a cat, so it's it's more of a hard canvas than it is a stuffed animal, and it's uh, stuffed with catnip. Usually your cat toys are of the higher grade, 
uh, fabric and meant to really take a beating that a ferret can dish out rather than a, uh, a stuffy like a, some of those <laughs> stuffed uh, small animals. This is close to another um, stuffed animal, but again, it's a denser fabric. Uh, it is qualified as a plushie, and as you can see, um, he has kind of emptied out the stuffies of this. Um, but anything that's a soft plush toy, because they can tear into and they can tear the fabric, uh, you want to keep an eye on and give it supervised play. But um, toys that make noise and have different textures definitely work as far as getting their interest. Something along the lines of, the, of this where it has a realistic uh, fur and it makes little bird noises, it's going to get their prey drive up. So you are going to get a little bit more aggressive play. And that does tend to lend itself to getting um, possibly napped. So when you're playing with their prey drive, um, I advise people to just be a little bit careful. Um, plastic cat noises, cat toys, cat toys, plastic cat toys. Um, again, good with the noise. It's a different texture. It's a different uh, stimuli for ferrets. Um, my recent group of ferrets um, have not been really into these little plastic cat toys, um, but I hold on to them in case I ever do wind up with a ferret that once again is very very into taking these and stashing them. Hey, baby. Um, a recent addition that we've had uh, that is interesting is the small little terrier sized tennis balls. And Lily is really into these. She likes to take them and she likes to dig at them and carry them places. And um, you will find with all of your cat toys, regardless if they're the Kong toys, uh, plushy uh, bell toys, crinkle toys, squeaky toys, um, at any point where you have your kids alone with these, um, they have a tendency of putting them in a spot. Uh, in my place, um, Boo likes to take his toys and put them underneath my bed. Uh, some of them feel that they like to put them in a certain corner. Um, they're a little OCD in that department when it comes to where the toys belong and whether or not they're going to play with them. Archie likes to take them and put them underneath the bed versus Boo that will put them in a drawer. So um, if you don't necessarily want them all over your house in specific spots, uh, you probably want to go through your house on a regular basis where you let them out, let them free roam with their toys and uh, check the sp learn the spots that they like to stash them and then check them on a regular basis to make sure that the toys are still in good condition if you want to keep them continually engaged um, you can feel free to rotate your toys out um, my kids happen to have a toy box that is literally a chest full of different toys some of them are a little uh, collapsible forts um, some of them, a lot of them are toys like these where they're small enough, they can pick them up and carry them places. After a while they get bored with it, so a lot of variety of toys that do different things, have different textures, uh, are really stimulating for them. But nothing beats the uh, plastic bag. <laughs> as much as you spend, I have probably spent hundreds of dollars on different toys um, to see what reaction I would get. Their favorite toys and the cheapest toys are still the plastic bags and the paper bags from the grocery store or from a department store. Um, it's a great full body experience for them. Um, instead of just picking up a toy and carrying it around and then they have to lay it out and they have to scratch at it or they put it away. A uh, plastic bag, they can leap on it, they can jump into it, they can climb in it. Um, and it's, it's, the, it's the toy that makes the noise for all of you who have ever had kids or for those who are, uh, you know, their kids are their ferrets. It's the toy that makes the noise that really gets them going.